All right. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I would like to talk about alternate priorities. What I mean by this, collectively, we all tend to judge code according to a small handful of software quality metrics. We may have different priorities, different orderings, sorry. And um, individually, you may add to this list. But uh, generally, we all tend to code the same way. Uh, the longer we code a certain way, the more baked into our brains it becomes. If we've been uh, good enough, we may consider judging other people's code. And if we're truly elite, we might even move someone's code into the crap namespace. And when they're on vacation, yes, I'm still traumatized. <clears throat> there can be beauty in code that doesn't pass the code review. What I mean by this is, if we prioritize different things, we may find something exquisite. So tonight, I'm going to prioritize small source code above all else. That's call, uh, called code golf. Why? Um, it's fun, first of all. But second, I find that it causes you to look at code differently, to think about the language in its obscure and strange uses. But most of all, it makes me stare straight into my blind spots. So here's a problem. We have a vector of points, and we're gonna solve this problem by uh, starting off with ordinary code and making it beautiful by being small. So this is just taking the maximum horizontal or vertical distance between two points in a vector. The x uh, points are gonna be the even indices, and the y points will be the odd indices. So here's some basic solution. It finds the min, max, x, and y, and then takes the max distance between them. But it's 214 bytes, so this is crap. The first order of code golf is to use meaningful one character variable names. We're down to 174 bytes already. Next, we can remove the const and the ref parameter because we don't care about speed, we care about smallness. We can count backwards and move the decrement into the body, which brings us down to 162. Oops, wrong direction. That was a pessimization. <clears throat> and this is a new one. We use excessive use of the comma operator to turn the full, whole full, uh, four body into a single statement. That way we can get rid of the curly braces. And we can migrate some code into the for loop body, or into the for loop uh, itself, so that we can save a semicolon and a comma. But with this approach, we're reaching about as far as I could go. So I'm gonna use a better algorithm. It, this one's n squared. <clears throat> so now we iterate over slightly differently. Instead of finding the min and the max, we iterate over the uh, indices, doing a brute force solution for every pair of x's and every pair of y's, we look for their max distance. We know we're comparing x's and y's if both i and j are uh, both even or both odd indexes. And it's already a better solution. So next we can move the, the size p, which is a rather heavy exp, uh, expression, and do it just once. Count backwards in this loop too. Decrement the variables in the conditions, and we're down to 124. We can remove the absolute value since we're now doing a brute force. Every x will be on the left side of the subtraction, and later it'll be on the right side. So we'll always get the positive max. We're at 119. The ternary operator is your friend. It saved us a whole bite. And to get rid of the size, the size entirely, we can use ranged for loops. Still need the manual index, so we can refer to the value with a and b and the indexes with i and j, and we're down to 113. Now this is a, a really advanced technique. We're about to do the outer, or the outer for loop curly braces can go away if we can convert the whole body into a single statement. We can do that, again, with the comma operator making the P expression in the inner for loop into the increment I, reset J, and then evaluate P. 
If we take the, uh, the reference, we can take the address, reduce the max, and get down to 87 bytes. 